Welcome to the Amish Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this circuit service of prayer and reflection for Sunday the 23rd of October. I am Josephine Pryor, a local preacher of the Amish and Methodist Circuit. Be with us now, Lord, as we gather to worship you together online or via an audio recording. May we feel your presence with us and hear your words in our hearts as we begin our worship on the themes of patience, generosity and gratitude. Amen. And now we can sing our first hymn, which is number 333 in Hymns and Psalms, For the Beauty of the Earth. We turn now to our prayers of adoration and confession. Let us pray. Creator God, we praise you for your love and delight in your creation, thanking you for the generosity with which you bless us each day, for the world and all living things that you have created. We give glory to your name. Saving God, we praise you that your love for us was poured out in Christ, whose life and example reveal the nature of untainted humanity in perfect union with the divine. We praise you that through his death and resurrection, you have redeemed us and by his blood, all things in all creation may be reconciled to you. Liberating God, we praise you for the true freedom that is found in Christ, freedom to be what you created us to be. We praise you for your deep love and care for the poor and those unjustly treated, and for calling us to share this love and passion for freedom for all in you. God of joy and peace, you are worthy of all praise and glory. So today we lift our hearts and voices with thanksgiving and sing praise. 
for your faithfulness and love in the work and life of the church. Lord, take us, remake us and challenge us with a spirit-filled world, transforming call to bring freedom and love whenever you call us and in whatever work you require of us as we look to the future with hope. Amen. In the light of God's glory, we recognise the shadows and darkness in our own lives. So let us now confess our sins and seek forgiveness. Let us pray. God of glory, forgive us for our knowledge is imperfect, our love inconstant and immature, and our obedience incomplete and self-serving. Help us to understand our own prejudices and narrow-mindedness. Please hold not our sin against us, but help us to repent of all our old-fashioned and unhelpful worldviews of diversity. Amen. Well, hear now the word of grace. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners and to all of us who turn to him in sorrow and in faith. He says that our sins are forgiven. Amen. And thanks be to God. Let us join together now and say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Our second hymn is number 500 from Hymns and Psalms. Lord God, your love has called us here.
And now a prayer for our offertory and a dedication. Let us pray. Lord, although we are not meeting face to face to worship today, we are still making our regular gifts of money, time and effort for the work of God in the church. We ask therefore that God should bless all these gifts and indeed our whole lives to his service and to his glory. We ask this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now Colin Powsland is going to read to us from Scripture. First from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, and secondly from the book of Luke, chapter 17 starting at verse 11. The first reading is from Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 1 and then going on to verses 4 to 7. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and live in them, Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Take wives and have sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there, do not decrease. But seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf, for in its welfare you will find your welfare. Amen. And the second reading is from Luke chapter 17 verses 11 to 19. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, We're not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Get up, go on your way. Your faith has made you well. Our third hymn is number 230 from Hymns and Psalms. There's a wideness in God's mercy.
And now to our sermon. The themes of this morning's service are patience, generosity and gratitude. Our first reading is a letter dating from 587 BC addressed to political and religious leaders of Judah exiled to Babylon during the 10 year siege of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. It was written near the end of the life of the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, whose words and sayings are recorded in the book bearing his name. Jeremiah lived in the city of Anathoth, a few miles north of Jerusalem. Anathoth was reserved for priestly families, and Jeremiah thought that he would grow up to live the quiet, privileged life of a priest, just like his ancestors. But when he was about 20, he suddenly discovered that God had other ideas for him. In verse 5 of the book of Jeremiah, we can read, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Well, God, God had Jeremiah as his own prophet for 40 years. And Jeremiah argued against the false, self-styled prophets employed by the political and religious leaders of the kingdom of Judah, warning them that all sorts of disaster would befall the whole of Judah if they didn't start to take seriously their obligations, especially to one another in their role of God's chosen people. So why was Jeremiah writing to the exiles in Babylon? The people of Israel, God's chosen ones, had a long history of stiff-necked disobedience, sham worship, injustice and inequality. Again and again, God had made covenants, which we would understand as legal agreements, between God and his people. The covenant is, or should be, the basis of maintaining both justice and a right relationship with God. In a nutshell, God would love, honour and protect the people in return for their obedience and faithful worship. It all went horribly wrong from the very beginning. Here are some Bible-based examples. Adam and Eve could do whatever they liked except eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge. They ate the fruit and were banished from paradise. A great flood wiped out creation except for Noah and his family, who were the only good people to be found at the time. Abraham, the first patriarch, only had to wait for his ancient wife, Sarah, to conceive. But instead, he messed it up by having a son by Sarah's slave girl first. Moses led the Israelites out of captivity in Egypt and presented the Ten Commandments to them. But as soon as his back was turned, they melted down their gold and made a calf which they worshipped instead of God. King Solomon built a temple in Jerusalem to house the Ark of the Covenant. And instead of worshipping God there, people in the north built shrines and worshipped the false gods of their neighbours. The northern kingdom of Israel was warned repeatedly against injustice and false worship until it was overrun by the Assyrian Empire over a hundred years before Jeremiah. Well, in spite of this repeated history of disobedience to God, judgment and then restoration, the people of Judah still had not learned the necessary lesson. There would be judgment and punishment for disobedience 
actions have consequences. But God is merciful. After disobedience comes judgment, followed by punishment, making way for remorse and repentance, and then finally forgiveness and mercy. Jeremiah's letter to the exiles in Babylon followed a disastrous and fatal attempt by the false prophet Hananiah to persuade the people of Judah that being enthralled to Babylon would be easy and short-lived. But it was Hananiah who was short-lived. He was dead within the year, while Judah was doomed to exile in Babylon for 50 years. Jeremiah's letter would comfort the people of Judah, even in the depth of their punishment and their necessary and growing remorse. They would settle in the land of their captors. With patience, they would build new lives, new homes and generate new families. During their alienation from home and their religious roots, they would remember God the ways of true worship, the ways of justice, mercy, and the law given through Moses. They would learn that through patience and generosity to one another and their captors, they would ultimately thrive and one day, in the distant future, return to their own land. With patience, justice and mercy, they would learn gratitude for the chance to reflect on God and their enduringly special relationship with him and their place in creation. Well, let's fast forward around 650 years to about AD 60 and the Apostle Luke writing his account of the good news of salvation and the forgiveness of sins. In other words, Luke's Gospel. Today's reading shows Jesus at work in his teaching and healing ministry. He's just been talking with the disciples about the importance of true worship of God through proper faith. And they've been frightened by his statement, which we can read in chapter 17, verse 1. It would be better for you to be thrown into the sea with a millstone round your neck than for you to cause one of the faithful to fall into temptation. The disciples are immediately worried about their own lack of confidence in their faith and how it might unintentionally cause the temptation and downfall of others. I can imagine Jesus laughing as he reassures them that even with faith as tiny as a mustard seed, they would be able to work wonders. When they come across a village with the ten lepers, Jesus and the disciples enter a living parable. The word leper here may just mean social outcast. The ten were clearly not demon possessed. They're patient, even generous. They don't rush greedily towards Jesus. Instead, they respectfully keep their distance while they ask for his help. So their faith is strong and they're all convinced that Jesus can heal them, which he does, telling them to visit the priests. On their journey to the priests, all 10 lepers became aware that they had been healed. Nine of the lepers simply accepted their healing as something expected because they'd asked for it. This is the response of people who focus on justice, which is analogous to somebody making a purchase. An object or service is offered and paid for. Transaction over. But the tenth leper, the tenth person, doesn't see Jesus' gift to them. That healing gift is not seen as a transaction. The gift is bigger and more precious than that. It's the most precious thing in the world. It's too valuable to be purchased. It can only be achieved 
through grace. The recognition of this preciousness leads the one leper to be truly grateful. This is the response of faith and gratitude for mercy. It is nothing less than the difference between the old covenant based on justice and the law of Moses and the new covenant in Christ based on love and mercy. So what of us? Our world is in at least as bad a state as that of the ancient people of Judah and the oppressed world of the Jews under Roman occupation. We are in need of healing, both physical and spiritual, just as those ten lepers were. The good news is that God's grace in Christ is available to us, just as it has been to them. If we approach Christ in each other, as they approached him in person, with patience, generosity, and especially gratitude. Amen. Our fourth hymn is a hymn of thanks, number 566 in hymns and psalms. Now thank we all our God. We turn now to our prayers of intercession. When you hear the words, the Lord hears our prayer, please respond saying, thanks be to God. The, word, the Lord hears our prayer, thanks be to God. Dear Lord, we pray for all the members of your family throughout the world and for everyone gathered here watching on the internet or in a recording. 
We pray that the agreements made to protect the environment at the Climate Change Conference in Glasgow last year may be renewed and upheld in the Climate Change Conference due to be held in the first week of November in Egypt. May the dramatic predicted increase in wholesale prices of fuel gas concentrate the minds of the powerful on both the affordable provision of warmth and further reductions in energy consumption. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Lord, we bring to you with deep sorrow some of the dreadful events from around our world for your peace and your healing. We long for an end to the disgraceful war being waged by Russia against Ukraine, now in its ninth month. We long for peace and stability in Somalia and Syria and Yemen. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for relief in Iran and Afghanistan from the dreadful inadequacies of tyrannical and hostile governments. We long for a freedom of dress, movement and education for Iranian and Afghan women and girls. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We long for stability, competence and integrity to return to our own UK government after the political and fiscal turmoil of the last few days and weeks. And we pray that the new Prime Minister to take residence in 10 Downing Street at the end of October will be a significant improvement on the previous four. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We pray for all those who, because of current circumstances, feel impoverished, cheated, threatened, imprisoned, under siege or exiled today. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. We think of those in hospital and those needing hospital treatment whose procedures are being cancelled or delayed. We think of those struggling with care in the community, those with both physical and mental health challenges. The Lord hears our prayer. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask. Grant us for the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. My final hymn is number 136 in Hymns and Psalms. I heard the voice of Jesus say,
And now our final prayer and benediction. Let us pray. Lord, be gracious to us and bless us and make your face to shine upon us and on all who need your grace and your love today. Grant to us and the authorities wisdom, good sense and courage to do God's will as we face the injustices of the world together. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in the knowledge of the love of God. And may the blessing of God, who we know as Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be with us all and with those whom we love, now and always. Amen.